Back in 2017, the Nintendo Switch would launch to immediate and overwhelming success, with the inventory available seemingly never able to meet demand even for years onwards. Everybody wanted to get their hands on the Switch, but at this point, it wasn't actually the only console Nintendo was still selling, with the 3DS still being around until it was discontinued finally in 2020. Of course, the Switch sales and demand far surpassed anything I think anyone could have predicted, and so Nintendo just didn't need to keep the old portable handhelds around. But this would leave a gap in the market that they had held really since the 90s. The Switch, of course, was handheld, but the 300 US dollar price tag wasn't cheap, and so this is where the Switch Lite entered the picture. Launched in 2019 and costing $200 US, the Switch Lite was simply a Nintendo Switch, but without any actual switching. There is no TV functionality whatsoever, making it purely a handheld and probably the ideal handheld experience for the Switch. With it being a bit smaller, but with slightly slimmer bezels, and the Joy-Cons built into the system itself, making it feel a bit more sturdy in the hands. Now, in 2021, we would also see the third and final Switch model being the Switch OLED. It has a larger OLED screen that boasts much more vivid, eye-catching colors, as well as true blacks and just a nicer, sleeker experience overall. Still, even with this, many will still swear by the Switch Lite when it comes to the handheld experience. And there are some real benefits to it, mainly coming down to it costing only $200 versus $350 for the OLED Switch, or $300 for the middle tier. Hey, how's it going? I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and in 20 2024, the Nintendo Switch is really feeling its age. I did a review already covering all three models, and we'll have that linked in the description if you're interested, but I felt like it was important to, in particular, talk about the Switch Lite separately, as it really does stand out as potentially a much better option right now due to the impending release of a Switch successor from Nintendo, typically referred to as the Switch 2. Most rumors are pointing to a latter half 2024 release, and in any case, there's no question that the Switch desperately needs a huge hardware upgrade. Even the OLED model can be essentially boiled down to a 2017 tablet with probably less power than an iPhone 7. Even with this, we have seen some incredible new games that have become instant classics over the years, as well as some ports that go above and beyond to defy all expectations. And, well, we've also seen a ton of really poor performing games and ports, and with the Switch being as underpowered as it is, that's not really a surprise. It's honestly not hardly more powerful than like a Wii U. And that came out in, what, 2012? The big thing I emphasized in my main review of all three Switch models is that most should probably wait for the Switch 2. You just might as well at this point, and it'll probably cost similar to the OLED model, maybe a little more when it comes out. However, I also brought up the potential value of the Switch Lite, and namely how I wouldn't be surprised if Nintendo didn't actually remove it from their lineup if and when the next Switch comes out. This is just a theory, but at $200, I think the Switch Lite is still incredible value, and would remain that way should a Switch 2 come out at, say, $400. Bucks. Plus, as mentioned earlier, this cheaper, more budget-oriented sector of the market for handhelds is pretty much wide open. There's been more competition in recent years, like with the Steam Deck, but ultimately, it's Nintendo's monopoly to lose. And so why potentially jeopardize the more budget-oriented side of the market by getting rid of the Switch Lite? A Switch 2 Lite probably will come out eventually, but if Nintendo waited two years before releasing the first Lite, I don't think it's unreasonable to expect something similar again. All this is to say that I personally believe the Nintendo Switch Lite is actually the best value Switch you can buy right now, keeping in mind the context of the Switch 2 coming possibly very soon. Although, of course, this does come with a massive caveat of not being able to play your Switch on a TV. Losing out on that does suck, and it makes the light definitely best as a console for an individual rather than being shared. Because of the small display and built-in Joy-Cons and no even kickstand, you're probably not going to want to play split-screen Mario on this thing, even if I guess you technically could. Couch co-op multiplayer is one of the best aspects of the Switch, and it is notably absent from this model. What is also notably absent, on the other hand, is the extra $100 or $150 you would have to pay to go up to a more versatile model. This is why I think the Switch Lite makes so much sense with the Switch 2 on the horizon. It's cheaper. And I also really think it works perfectly as a secondary Switch, with perhaps your family's main Switch model being typically docked on the TV. With Nintendo Online, which starts at 20 bucks a year, you can get access to both online play, of course, as well as cloud saves, which means it's pretty straightforward for saves to transfer from your dock Switch to your Switch Lite and vice versa, if you have two of them, not making it difficult to bounce between the systems. Plus, when the Switch 2 comes out and you purchase it, the Switch Lite won't be suddenly useless. There is a massive seven-year backlog of games for the Lite, meaning there's no end to the content you can play on it. Especially if you'd be sharing that Switch 2 with siblings, spouse, or whatever, you could still have your Switch Lite as your personal handheld to play in bed or on the bus when you can't or just don't feel like bringing around your shiny new version. Odds are games will also be backwards compatible, meaning current Switch games should play just fine on the Switch 2 or whatever Nintendo might call it. There's very little chance, in my opinion, this won't be the case, with the Switch having been as popular as it was. It's a very different 
different situation from the Wii U, which while we didn't see backwards compatibility from the Wii U to the Switch, they were very different systems. And in any case, we still saw most of the best games ported over to the portable system in the years following its release. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, for example, while it was a launch title in 2017, it really was just an updated version of the original 2014 Wii U title. Meaning, yeah, the current Mario Kart game is about a decade old, which is kind of wild. Basically what I am trying to say though is that games you purchase for the Switch Lite should be both downloadable and playable on the Switch 2 with no problem, so you're not just throwing away your money in any capacity. And the ability to bring such amazing, even 100 hour plus games like Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom in conjunction with the rest of Nintendo's classics like Mario Odyssey or the recent Mario Wonder, and even some terrific ports and new titles from third party developers such as Persona 5 Royal or hundreds of others, there's so much potential for fun here it's absurd, and at $200 I really don't think you can go wrong. Now do keep in mind that while 200 bucks isn't too intimidating given what the console can do, the games themselves can add up to a lot of money very quickly. Nintendo is terrible with ever reducing prices, and they barely tend to go on sale. Third party games aren't so bad, but even old games like Mario Kart, if you check Nintendo's website, typically still go for 60 bucks. We do see discounts here and there, but it's indicative of how Nintendo is truly making their money, so just keep in mind that you'll probably end up paying a lot more than 200 bucks when all is said and done. Unless, of course, you're like me and already had a family Switch before purchasing the Switch Lite. In this case, all my games from that Switch, whether on cartridge or online purchase, can easily be played on the purely portable handheld, and as mentioned again, the saves over the cloud can be transferred back and forth with ease. Truthfully, I do prefer my Switch OLED these days, but most of us can't call these things tax deductions, and probably won't want or need more than two Switches at the absolute max. So if you do want that second one, the Switch Lite is just the obvious choice. Or, you know, you could just wait for the Switch 2 and get that. Probably a smart idea, especially if you already have a Switch, but if you're over eager, I don't think you can go wrong with the Lite, truly. So that's really the answer right out of the gate. Yes, the Switch Lite is very much worth buying, but as always, this can and will differ for each individual and your own situation. In any case, let's go ahead and talk a little bit further about the design and the hardware that makes the Lite so unique. What makes the Switch Lite stand out from the other models more than anything else is its fun, colorful, beautifully formed matte plastic design. The curved edges and having the controllers actually attached to the device leaves the entire experience feeling like one of the more premium, pure handhelds out there, but still not fragile or in any way clunky, like the other Switches can feel depending on the situation. For colors, there's a good few options, pink, yellow, turquoise, blue, and gray, along with some special additions that have hit over the years. This gives a lot more choice and variety than the other models, although if you're looking to buy a Switch Lite, you'll probably find some colors are typically more available than others. I'll have in the description an Amazon affiliate link if you want to see what's available for yourself and uh, help out the channel at the same time, so thank you. You may have been a little confused about what's going on with my Switch here, as I've had some shots of it in the turquoise, and then others with this fancy transparent so-called atomic purple. And uh, yeah, it's basically just a custom piece I installed a few years back. I did do a video on it, so I'll link that in the description, because why not? But I highly recommend not doing this. It's much more difficult than the other Switch models. But anyways, I've just got a mix of older and newer footage, but I think it gets the point across. And you could always get like a skin or something for your Switch Lite if you want to shake things up, along with possibly a case for extra protection if you're worried about that. I think a carrying case is probably a good idea, given the light is just a bit too large for most pockets, but I've never felt like this sort of case is too necessary for protection, as the system just feels so solid in the hands. I do also highly recommend getting a tempered glass screen protector just to protect yourself from scratches and the like. When it comes to durability, the Switch Lite is great, except for when it isn't, and the issues all typically tend to spawn from the Joy-Cons themselves. Now as said, having them attached to the console really does add to the experience, and it's also worth noting the D-pad is actually a proper D-pad rather than the solo buttons on normal Joy-Cons, so I appreciate that. But it's those analog sticks that can be the issue, with Nintendo's infamous stick drift. While it's the normal Joy-Cons themselves known for the worst drift, my own controllers that came with my OLED Switch started drifting after maybe a year of very light usage, which is absurd. Unfortunately, this can still happen on the Switch Lite as well, and it's not such an easy issue to deal with because you can't just take off the controllers and then swap them with new ones. I will say that it doesn't seem to be as prevalent, or at least reported, as drifting on detachable Joy-Cons, and there are precautions you can take to help prevent it. Don't be too aggressive with them. Don't eat your console. Don't eat your co don't eat with your console. Keep it clean, basic kind of stuff. There are DIY kits and things to fix drift, but that's not really a great option. If it happens to you, best shot is to try to contact Nintendo's customer support, but if you're out of warranty, you might not have any luck. You can, however, recalibrate 
separate the joysticks in your settings, which might actually help. Ultimately, it's an issue I definitely wanted to talk about, but it's not one so common or problematic that I would write off the Switch Lite by any means. It could happen, but if you be careful, hopefully you'll never have any issues. Mine still seems to be okay, but I also haven't played it much, in fairness, since getting that Switch OLED a couple years back, so don't let it scare you away completely, but it might be another good reason to wait for the Switch 2, as Nintendo will hopefully finally address this issue in whatever the controllers end up looking like. So that's the design, and it definitely stands out compared to the other two systems. The display is a bit smaller at 5.5 inches versus up to 7 inches on the large OLED model, which is a significant jump in size. There are pros and cons. We already mentioned the OLED screen is of course better, and a big reason why it is is because it can turn off individual pixels, which makes for true blacks and vibrant colors. Like when we zoom in here, you can see how the blacks are still lit by the LCD backlight on the lights, but completely dark on the OLED. The original Switch is also LCD, so it's the same that way, but it's a bit larger at 6.2 inches, although the bezels are thicker, and it leaves the Switch Lite, at least to me, feeling a lot more slick and modern. I actually really like this small display. It's more of a handheld for one thing, and there's also a nice added benefit in that all three consoles have the same resolution of 720p, or in other words, they have about the same amount of pixels. Of course, the more pixels, the better, but what makes the real impact is pixel density. Because the light is smaller and has the same amount of pixels as the other models, those pixels are closer together, and it makes for an actually noticeably sharper image. I would still take the OLED model for both the size and the coloring, but the Switch Lite does feel more high definition, and that's a pretty sweet bonus to come along with the 150 bucks being saved. It also gets rid of the issue of some Switch games looking just not very good on a TV. Hogwarts Legacy somehow is on Switch, and if you watch the trailer, it doesn't look very good, but I would have to imagine on a Switch Lite, it's probably not so bad. What isn't quite as nice is the battery life, which is reduced compared to its bigger siblings. Nintendo claims it'll get three to seven hours depending on the game being played, versus four and a half to nine hours. This isn't the most drastic difference, but if you're in a situation where you won't be anywhere near an outlet while you're playing for an extended period of time, the light isn't going to perform as well. Although something like a portable power bank is a simple solution if you don't mind bringing it around with you. Of course, the console charges with USB-C, which is great, just like the vast majority of smartphones, including even the newest iPhones these days. The reason for worse battery is exactly what you would expect. The system is just smaller in order to make it more portable. It's also lighter at only 0.61 pounds versus 0.93 and 0.88 on the other models. This may not sound like much, but again, it does really help the light feel like a more comfortable handheld, and it does feel significantly lighter in the hands. Every single aspect of the Switch Lite was geared for the portable first mindset, because there is no other option with it. You can't play on the TV. This is still a Switch, with the same controls, ability to play the same games, assuming a TV isn't required, and of course, there's a micro SD card slot to expand the storage. The Lite only comes with 32 gigs of internal memory, so if you plan on downloading just about anything, I highly recommend getting a micro SD card. They're dirt cheap at this point, and the games run great off of them. At the end of the day, that's, I think, the big thing I want to push here. This is a Switch, just without the switching. For $200, I think it's a killer deal that, in spite of its age, is only looking better thanks to the endless games and hours of fun the console is capable of playing. The only real con to this is probably performance. The Switch is vastly underpowered, hence why a Switch 2 is so needed. And so I do recommend looking up a game and making sure it performs okay on Switch before actually purchasing it. Some titles like the Arkham Trilogy are so utterly broken and unplayable you have to wonder how they even got to store shelves. I already went fairly in depth on the performance in my video on all three models, so I won't go any further here, but basically do your research. I also don't think the Switch Lite will give as many issues as the other systems. While some games do run at pretty low resolutions, the lower quality isn't really too noticeable on the 5.5 inch screen, especially compared to a big 65 inch 4K TV. Games like Breath of the Wild or Tears of the Kingdom don't look the best when they're blown up, but absolutely look breathtaking on the Switch Lite, even if there are occasional frame drops still. This is one of the the best video game handhelds ever made, as is the regular Switch, but if you want a console dedicated to being for on the go, the Switch Lite is the clear and obvious choice in 2024, especially with the Switch 2's release looming. And so with that, I think I'm right about done here. Hopefully this video helped you out, and if it did, please hit that like button, it helps out way more than you could ever expect. And also, please comment down below, do you have a Switch Lite? Do you think it's still a worthwhile purchase in 2024? What's your favorite game? As always, curious to hear from those with the console or thinking about getting one. I'm also quite curious to see not only the Switch 2, but potentially an eventual Switch 2 Lite. Who knows what that'll look like, but if it's anything like the first Lite, I'm sure it'll be great. Again, I've got lots of links in the description to my other reviews, as well as that video where I modded my Switch Lite. That was a lot harder than I expected going into it, so probably don't do it yourself, but it does look pretty cool, I must admit. But yeah, that's about enough for me. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and I will see you all next time.